Hey everyone, so today I'm going to do a short tutorial on QGIS. Um, this is the case where you get uh, a bunch of points from say an external party or something and you need to select like the 50 furthest points from each other. This might be useful if you want to do like ecology and you're trying to do a randomized sampling. So we start here with the Google Terrain file which is available to anyone once you download QGIS and we are going to import the shape file that we've gotten from someone else. So here we can see that I have 121 points scattered around Singapore but I don't want to sample all of them. I only want to sample 50 of them and I want them to be a bit more dispersed and not so close to each other. So if we open the attribute of the shape file, we can see that it has a description. Um, say for example, city, house, and park, and you can tell that it's been imported as a, from HTML code somewhere else, but this, uh, this bold symbol is not so much used to us when we're here, so we'll first be getting rid of that. Um, the rest of the fields don't contain any information. We only have the points and their description. So the first thing we want to do is that it's a lot easier to edit things like names outside of QGIS. So we want to do export, save feature as. We'll go to uh, CSV, comma separated. Then we clicked on these dots. And we call it random points, not CSV. We make sure that um, the CRS is set to something we can work with. So I want to work in meters later. And since this is Singapore, I'll use a Singapore projection. And because we want to preserve the geometry when we export it, because as you can see in the attribute table, it contains no information about where the points are. So I will click export as xy. This will generate the xy coordinates on the CSV file when we export it. We don't need to add this to the map. We click OK. The layer has uh, successfully been saved. We go to our folder where we exported it. So you can see we have the xy coordinates. Uh, all the fields are blank and frankly all the fields are useless so we can delete these. So it's safe to say that if we ever have to import this in, it is okay because we have the geometry as well as, uh, I mean that's all we need right because they're points, we just need the x and y coordinate. Alright, so now we want to get rid of the HTML code that's surrounding what we need. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select this whole row. Yeah, description is spelled wrongly, but it doesn't matter for now. I go to data from table. This is a very useful function in Excel if you want to alter large amounts of data at once. You can do many things. Today, we're just going to extract our text from in between the HTML code. And what I want to do is go to transform extract text before delimiter. What this means is I take any text before what I specify here. So if I write this, then it gets rid of any text from what I specify and after. I do the same to remove opening bracket from the beginning and it automatically does it for you and what I'm gonna do is close and load to here and I'm gonna click load and you can see the uh, query is uh, loading. You just gotta double check that it has finished loading before you do anything else or Excel will not be happy. So once we've done this, we want to give each point a unique name so that later on when we look at the in QGIS, it'll be easier to isolate out. So I'll go with ID. And this shall be point 0.1, point 0.2, 
to and so on. The way to one to one. So we save this, make sure we keep the CSV format. So now that we're back in QGIS, we want to import the CSV file that we just created. So we click on this button, we go to delimited, we go to our CSV file, we open it, we make sure that file format is correct, there are no extra top layers to discard, X is in X, Y is in Y, the CR is correct, we click add, close. So now we see that our new points, well rather our old points, are on the mat. But if you click on the attribute table, now we have then use type and ID. So the next thing we should do is run a distance matrix on them. So how we should do this is we click processing toolbox, we type distance matrix. Since we are comparing points within the same layer, we make sure they're the same and the input ID is um, the unique ID field is how we identify the points. So that was what ID was for. If we leave this at zero, then it will compare say point one with point two, point one with point three, point three with point four, and we don't need that. We just need to know the nearest point. So we, we put this as one and we run the algorithm. So now we have this new layer. It's a temporary layer as you can see from here. And the difference is now we have target, input, as well as distance. So this tells us that for 66, its nearest point is 24, and this is the distance between them. Since um, this is in a metric projection, then this would be in meters. Okay. So now that we know we got what we want, we should convert this to a permanent layer. Distance matrix. And we want this in a shape file because shape files are just easier to work with. We save it as a CSV, the next time you want to import it, you have gotta import through that. But with shape files, you can just drag it in, check that everything's okay, click OK, and you will see that the temporary layer sign has vanished. So now we have we have some parameters here that we need. We have the LAN type and ID, and here we have the same thing, but we have the distance. So what we should do next is we should combine them into one file so that we can work with them together. So how we should do this is we should go back to processing toolbox, we type join, and we want join attributes by field value because these two layers share one common thing which is their ID. So it doesn't really matter which one you use as your input input layer 1 and 2 because we're joining all of them together. So we want one of them to be distance matrix and one of them to be our random points. And we need a common field between them. So this would be input ID and ID. So this way each point will be joined to the distance where it was the input ID. Make sure that's correct. We want to copy all fields because that's just easier, but if you want, you can select which one you want to join. But we want all of them. And we're going to create a temporary layer just to see if it works. So we run it. And now you can see we have a new temporary layer called joint layer. It's the same points as before. And if we open the attribute table, you can see that all attributes from both tables have been joined to a single one. So this helps us tremendously because now we don't have two separate layers with what we want. We have one combined layer. So we can go ahead and merge. Uh, sorry, we should make this layer permanent. So we go random points with distance. As a shape file, it's always click OK and it has once again become a permanent layer. 
So now that this has become a permanent layer, we don't want to sample all 121 points. So what we're going to do is we're going to open attribute table and we're going to delete the points that are too close to each other. We're only going to take the ones furthest from each other so that our sampling points are more spread out. So on, in order to do this, we click toggle editing and we arrange these by distance. So one click will arrange it from smallest to largest and another click will arrange it from largest to smallest. So here we want the first 50 points that are furthest from each other. So we go to 51, we highlight it all the way down and we click delete. And I want to emphasize that when you do this and it's saved, it saves permanently onto the file on your computer. So if you close it, your rows have already been deleted. So always make sure you have backup. Once you're right click save changes and this is our new file. If we close it, you can see that now we have the top 50 points that are furthest away from each other. We can see compare it to the ones that we removed, which are, which are really clustered, we get a little bit more spaced out ones. Um, things like this sometimes is unavoidable because there's too many points nearby, but generally this makes your points a bit more spaced out. So when we close toggle editing, everything is safe. Okay, now that we have our 50 layers, we want to better visualize which point is on which land use type. So this is a matter of aesthetic. So we open layer styling. We go to categorize. And we want to categorize them by land type, right? So we click land type. I like I like spectral, but you can always use random colors or you can select the colors yourself. Click classify and now they have been classified according to which type they are. So you can see the legend here under layers or under layer styling. Over here you can change the color that you want. Um, so for example, if we go up to this point here, I know this isn't accurate, but it's just for demonstration purposes. Go to identify features. You click on this and it will give you all its attributes. So importantly, the land type is city because it's red and city is red. All right, so now you have selected your 50 layers that are the most spaced out apart and you have them in different colors. So I hope this tutorial is useful. If you like it, I can make more tutorials in the future. But thanks for watching.